Hi, this is Joel Persinger from Practical Defense Systems. Today I'm going to show you a grip. How to get, you know, I, this is when I get to tell you to get a grip. <laughs> I always wanted to say that. So thank you very much for letting me do that. I appreciate it. Look, this is where I want to make sure that you're working with a, with a semi-automatic pistol and you have a really good solid grip. The reason I mention it is because semi-automatic pistols, unlike revolvers, are dependent upon the platform you give them when you get a good solid grip. If you don't have a good grip on the gun, the gun can rock a lot and then the slide doesn't make its full travel to the rear and it either won't eject the spent cartridge completely and you end up with a, a you know, piece of brass stuck in here like this called a stovepipe. Uh, there's other names for it too. Uh, or the slide will throw the brass out but when it goes forward it, it's not in a position to grab a new round and so when it goes forward it doesn't feed and you have a failure to a feed. And that could be irritating beyond belief when you're on the range but it can be disastrous if you're defending yourself. And so we want to make sure that if we have a, a good grip and the gun is not, do, not functioning properly, then chances are it's probably the gun or the combination of the gun and the ammunition. But if you don't have a good grip, it really doesn't matter what ammunition you put in it or whether the gun's in working condition or not, chances are you're going to end up with a lot of failures. I had a guy standing right next to me on the range here at the P2K range one time. And he was an elderly fellow and he had a, a pistol that he, he shot periodically and it was just jamming about every second or third round. And I was working with a student and when we took a break I walked over and said to him, uh, sir has that gun always done that? He said, yeah I've had it for 30 or 40 years, it's always done that, I hate this thing, I don't even know why I take it to the range. Well I had noticed that he was gripping the pistol like this, so his grip was really low and there was a great big gap in his grip. And I said, you know, it might be your grip. And he said, what are you talking about? Well I had my instructor shirt on, you know, so he probably figured I might know something. Otherwise, sometimes people don't want to listen to you. But anyway, he did. And I said, well, if I may suggest, get your, the web of your hand all the way up under that tang, under this part right here, and get a high grip on that pistol like that. And then since you don't have this gap, the pistol won't rock as much, and it'll probably feed just fine. Well, sure enough, he did. He got his hand up there underneath that pistol. He pressed the trigger, and that gun just ran like a well-oiled machine. I mean, it didn't skip a beat, ran beautifully, and he didn't have any problems with it. And he was amazed. He was flabbergasted. He said, I've had this thing for 30 years. Why didn't somebody tell me? So I'm here to tell you. <laughs> you want to have a good, solid grip on your pistol. And let me show you a really good way to do it. Now, keep in mind what I'm going to show you is one way to do this. There's a whole lot of different ways to grip a gun. I'm going to show you the one that's worked for me for a long time. Uh, my father was a deputy sheriff uh, for many years, and he taught me how to shoot. And then I've had a lot of professional training since. And this is a, a grip that will work very well with either a semi-automatic pistol or a revolver. Some grips will work well with one or the other, but not both. Since I tend to shoot both, I like to keep things simple and use one type of grip that will work with either one of them. I'm not a competitive shooter. I'm not shooting for championships. If that's what you're doing, you may want to adopt a different type of grip. But if you're using it for self-defense or something along those lines, maybe you have a revolver at home and you also have a semi-automatic and so on, I'm going to teach you a grip that will work equally well with either one. Now it starts off with acknowledging that this part of the pistol right here is designed for our hand to be all the way up in here. Not over the top, just all the way up under here. This is oftentimes called a beaver tail uh, or a, a tang is on the end here. And it's designed so that the web of your hand, this part of your hand right here, will fit right up in there underneath that. So you want to take your hand and kind of make a C and then fit it underneath that little part of the pistol right there and push it all the way to the top. What you want to avoid is having a gap. So you can see if I move myself out of the way, I give you a little more light below it, or, or between it, you can see there's a gap there. I can stick my finger right through there. And if you have that gap, what happens is you have less geometric advantage over the pistol. So when you press the trigger, the gun's going to rock more on you. If your hand is all the way up underneath it like that, now you have a higher grip and that gives you more geometric advantage over the pistol as it moves and it won't rock as much. It's easier to, for you to control the recoil of the gun going off. That's why people with a higher grip like this have, are less troubled by recoil and people with a lower grip, you see the gun going all over the place. Part of this, by the way, is also gun fit. You're going to find that gun fit is really super important. It's extremely important with shotguns for uh, reasons we can go into at a later time. Uh, but with handguns and rifles, it's also important. And I'll show you a couple of ways to find out whether the gun fits. Uh, one is if every time you press the trigger, you're having to readjust your grip or move your grip around every time, the gun doesn't fit you. And that's why you're doing that. You wouldn't buy a pair of shoes that were too small and hurt and pinched or too big and you flopped around with them. So 
uh, you know, your feet flopping around all over the place. So don't buy a gun that way either. Make sure it fits. But let's get back to our grip. So the first thing first, we're going to make a C like this, and we're going to fit it right up behind that pistol, just like that, so that the gun lines up with our arm. You can see how it lines up right here. Now that we've got that, notice too that it's all the way up to the top on the base of the gun. Now we don't have to worry about this. This is just a plastic pistol, so it can't hurt anybody. There's nobody behind the camera, by the way. Uh, Nick has moved, so there's nobody there. So if I move the gun this way, I'm not pointing it at anybody, so you don't have to freak out. Just so that you know, we run a 100% safe show here. So there you are. Uh, that's the first part. Now, you want to take these bottom three fingers, that's your middle finger, ring finger, and pinky, and wrap them around the grip, just like that. Your index finger, on the other hand, your trigger finger stays up here on the slide or on the frame of the gun. Not down here, up here. Because if it's down here, it's likely to want to slip in there on the trigger finger because these are built to be ergonomic and that's where it wants to go. So let's keep it up here so that we're 100% safe and we know that we're not going to have the gun go off when we don't want it to. So that's how our grip looks so far. We've got our fingers wrapped around. These fingers are wrapped around the grip on the bottom. We've got our hand as high up on the pistol as possible, so our, our, uh, the web of our hand is up here. It lines up with our arm and our finger is off the trigger on the side of the gun. Now I'm going to turn it around. Let's look at the other side. As we look at the other side, what we can see is our fingers have wrapped around the grip here and our thumb is out of the way along the side of the pistol. Now it can be up here if it's more comfortable for you or whatever, but the point is it needs to be somewhere out of the way of the pistol. Now I shoot a 1911 a lot, and so this thumb tends to ride on top of the slide. That's an old Jeff Cooperism. if you want to look up who he was. Uh, quite the pistol, pistol arrow, that fella. But now what I want you to see with this part of the grip now as we start to take this hand, our support hand, and match it up, is I want you to see this part of the grip right here is visible to you. My hand, unless you're enormous, your hand is not going to, or the pistol's tiny, your hand is not going to wrap entirely around the grip. If it does, the gun doesn't fit you. You're going to be able to see a portion of the grip right here. And that's an important thing to know, so I wanted to point that out to you. The other thing you're going to find is if you're gripping the gun properly and the gun fits you, you're going to find that these knuckles right here, these knuckles are right in the middle of the grip. So here's the middle of the grip. You can see it. There it is. And my knuckles line right up with the front of the grip, with the, with the front strap. That's what that's called, is a front strap, that, that part of the grip right there. So my knuckles line up there because this gun fits me. So here you go. There's my grip again. You can see my fingers are wrapped around here. My knuckles are lined up on, on the front. And my thumb is out of the way. So, you know, knuckles and thumb and like that. Now you can see this blue part of the grip here. I want to take... Uh, this part of the heel of my hand, this part right here, and I want to match it in right next to this part of the heel of this hand. So it's sort of like a jigsaw puzzle piece. I don't want to stack them on top of each other. If I was making a jigsaw puzzle and I had a piece here and I had a piece here that matched next to it, I wouldn't take this piece and set it down and take this piece and stack it on top. That's not going to help me build my puzzle. Instead, what I would do is take this piece down and put it where it belongs. And if this one fit, I would snap it into place next to it so that I had a nice level puzzle. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to picture this hand as being a jigsaw puzzle piece and this hand is being exactly the opposite piece and the two will fit together. So as I take my grip and I've got my strong, my shooting hand grip, now I have this open part of my, of the grip of the pistol, the stocks of the pistol, and I'm going to have this part of the, this puzzle piece right here, you can see it formed by my thumb and the heel of my hand, matches this puzzle piece here, the thumb and the heel of my hand, and I'm going to match this one inside that one. And when I do, watch where my thumbs go. Now, I'm not stacking them on top. I'm taking the heel of my hand so that the heel of this hand, my support hand, can feel that grip. It's pushing all the way in there until it can feel it. My thumbs are now stacked on top of each other, and I'm going to wrap my fingers around my other fingers. Oh, these are all of my fingers, my index finger right down to my pinky, wrap it around my other fingers. And you'll notice, notice if you will, that the knuckles on this finger line up right on top of the knuckles of the other of, of the other fingers. There you go. Now that's a proper shooting grip. And you can see I've got a really good solid grip on the pistol. My thumbs are out of the way. I've got a high grip on the pistol. You'll notice if I turn around this way, you can see I've got a nice high grip. Uh, you know, I don't have any gap going on in here. I've got a nice high grip there. And then notice too, if I were to lift up the pistol and you could look underneath, notice that as I do that, you'll see that both hands are pressed up against the actual stocks and grip of the pistol. There's no gap in there. Now, where you'll see a gap is when people have an incorrect grip. 
So let me show you an example of an incorrect grip. Now, I once had an instructor who said, never show anybody how to do something wrong. Well, come on now, you, you're an intelligent individual. I think you'll understand why this is incorrect. You'll see this a lot. You'll see people that when, instead of taking this support hand and putting it inside one jigsaw puzzle piece inside the other, instead of what they'll do is they'll take this one, stack it on top of that one like that, and then wrap this thumb around there, around the wrist, to try to hold the wrist firmly and then wrap what the you know the ends of their fingers around the front of the the other hand. Well here's a few problems with that. First of all you'll notice that the ends of my fingers are all I can get around that other hand because I you know I've pulled this hand so far back now that the, all I can get is just a, the last knuckle and a little bit of my fingers around that other hand. So that gives me less support there. And then if I look underneath the grip you'll notice there's a big old hole here. It's a big old gap right here. I'm not I'm not feeling this part of the grip at all with this hand. All I've got is fingers on the edge and my thumb wrapped around the top of my wrist and I have this big gap. So that's not working. It makes the grip weaker. And the other problem is you'll notice I've got my thumb, if you can see it, I'm sorry I got out of the camera there, you can see it right where the slide is going to come rocketing back. This is called a slide right here because it slides and it slides with a vengeance. It'll come back every time I press the trigger. It'll come shooting back here really hard, made of steel, and if I've got any part of my anatomy between it and where it's going, it's going to injure me. We call it slide bite. That's when the slide comes back and takes a chunk of meat off the top of your thumb because you've got it over the top of your wrist and right in front of the slide. And you'll notice how weak my finger grip is here. It's just really not doing much for me. So people think this is fairly strong. I'm here to tell you, having taught thousands of people how to shoot, this is a very poor grip. Instead of stacking it on top, Build it like a puzzle piece. Take this puzzle piece and this puzzle piece and match the two jigsaw puzzle pieces together. Wrap your fingers around so that you, the knuckles line up. Keep your thumbs out of the way of, of, the, of the moving parts. And now you've got a wonderful and solid shooting grip. Now, at this point, once you have this grip, you can extend your pistol out. And anytime your sights are on target, you want to shoot, you can shoot and shoot and shoot and then you can take your finger right back off target and you've got a really good solid grip on your gun. That is an outstanding grip on a semi-automatic pistol. What you'll find is that grip will also work on a revolver. So hopefully in that grip you'll find a way to shoot the pistol and have it work very well for you. One of the reasons I showed you that grip as opposed to some others is that that particular type of grip will work very well whether you're shooting a semi-automatic pistol or a revolver. There are some grips that will only work for semi-automatic pistols and if you use them when shooting a revolver they can take your support hand thumb and put it in front of the, of the, uh, the cylinder where there's a gap between the cylinder and the forcing cone and a lot of gas and stuff comes blowing out of there and you can burn the tip of your thumb and injure your thumb. So you want to make sure that if you're shooting a revolver you have a grip that gets that thumb, that support hand thumb, completely out of the way of that cylinder and not in front of it where you're going to get burnt. The grip I just showed you will work generally pretty well with both types of guns. Now it's not the only type of grip. I don't want you to think that there's just a, the only way to do it. It certainly isn't. There's lots of other different ways to grip pistols and you're going to run into instructors that teach all kinds of things. They're not good or bad. They're just different. I would say take the best and leave the rest. Try it. Try the one I showed you if you'd like. If it works great for you, you're good to go. If it doesn't and you like another grip better, then that works better for you. That works too. All of our bodies are different. God made us all unique. And if your body needs to move or twist or bend a certain way in order for you to be successful in shooting, then for crying out loud, adopt that and you're good to go. Make it happen. Thank you very much for watching our videos. I'm very grateful. We have some great videos coming up. We have a whole bunch that maybe you haven't seen. Please go take a look at them. And please like, subscribe, wherever the button is. And share us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all those other uh, terrific social media places. Uh, the more videos that you watch and the more friends that you invite and the more subscribers we have, the more videos we can actually produce for you. And we love doing this for you. Thank you again for watching. Be safe.